In the fall of 2013, I learned that there was a project going on within the school to create a new major. This new major was trying to make humanities appealing to students. Why do they have to make the humanities appealing to students? I decided to explore this. Why was there disinterest in the humanities? When I started college, my father told me that I should go into a field that would get me a job when I came out of school. To me, that meant STEM courses. I saw my fellow students doing the same thing. There were many, many, many psychology majors, but not as many religion, English, French majors. So I wondered, is this a pattern? Is this just my generation? Is this a fluke? Or is this becoming the new norm? I found this disconcerting, so I decided to explore the issue. Why were students not interested in the humanities? Are the humanities still important? Is there a decline of the humanities in academia? Are they important to a well-rounded education? Are they important to life beyond academia? Debates over the place of the humanities, STEM, and career courses in education are not new. I began with the STEM program and realized that a lot of this has to do with the economy. Many of the sources argue that STEM majors get more jobs. A 2013 analysis of graduates' first job salaries in five states in 2012 finds that career-oriented technical majors in disciplines such as computer science pull in the highest earnings. Non-career specific science and math majors generally are in a second place. And social science and humanities bring up the rear. In August, Obama announced his plan to give colleges strong incentives to keep the tuition costs down while ensuring that more students complete their degrees. Under the proposal, much of which would require congressional approval, schools' eligibility for federal aid would begin in 2018, be linked to the graduate rates, tuition affordability, and graduate salaries. Many people, including the administration, agree that creating a valid and informative measure system for college's success is a daunting challenge. In basing colleges' rankings and eligibility for federal aid partly on graduate salaries could dissuade people from preparing for careers such as social work and history teaching. We don't pay these people well, but that isn't because we don't need them. Ironically, at the same time that Americans are looking to colleges more for specific career training, interest in humanities and liberal arts is growing in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Is the U.S. turning to vocation out of fear? The debate. How should we judge a good education? By earnings or by overall value? Humanities or STEM? Almost all the articles I found contradicted each other. We need the humanities. We don't need the humanities. Is there even a problem? In the 1960s, the percentage of humanities majors hit a new high but colleges began dropping liberal arts requirements to attract students. By 1961, Soviets achieved first man Earth orbit. The U.S. began promoting investment in science education. By the 70s and 80s, college enrollment had soared, but the humanities majors began to drop. The humanities tried to make a comeback throughout the 90s, but rising student debt and economic insecurity in the 2000s began to fuel career-oriented studies. By 2013, Congress is limiting the National Science Foundation from funding humanities-based research in political science, research not aimed at improving national security or the economy. House appropriators proposed 49% cuts in the 2014 funding for the National Endowment for the Humanities and the National Endowment for the Arts. But will losing the humanities be so bad? I was wondering how this was affecting my own campus. 
I began asking students and interviewing professors about this debated issue. The best way to start was by asking, what does the term humanities mean to you? When you say humanities, though, humanities, like the study? I know very vaguely what that entails, um, getting to know about the human condition, um, things like art that focus on aesthetics or writings, poet, poetry, and things like that. A wide range of things, but a focus in like art, literature, history, a strong focus in that area. I guess when you think of humanities, you think of, uh, you know, your history classes, the things that teach you about the arts, some language arts, to, not so much grammar, but knowing you know, Shakespeare and stuff like that. I think that's my first impression of humanities. Um, I think humanities is the study of human beings and human culture and human culture history. Oh. When you think of like humanity, you think like, I don't know, I just think of kindness. Being humanized and empathetic. Being human. And... Like for example, me being a social worker, I know humanities is going out into the community or into the society and helping out. So it's for the well-being of the human population. I guess it's the study of what it means to be human. And I think the humanities tends to split that up into different aspects and um, place it in different disciplines, but overall it's trying to understand the human experience. There are sometimes I look at classes and I'm like, that's great, but it doesn't fit either one of my majors. It depends on the humanities courses because some humanities courses seem very, they don't like busy work. It doesn't really, you're hearing things that you've already heard or already been exposed to and it's really just like a lot of people say a waste of time. I have also had the feeling that my time was being wasted. I guess for some it's just that extra coursework. I feel like they feel like, as we do feel, sometimes feel like we're in this time crunch, like we have to finish and learn all these things and learn all these other things and our gen eds in a certain period of time. And that could be a little stressful for some people. You know, it's just one of those things when you're taking a class and it's not directly for your major, you kind of get a little bit upset because you're like, why am I taking this? It's pointless. It's not even helping me with my major. Um, but I guess kind of like, it's more towards the end that you realize, okay, well, you know, taking that class that I didn't want to take actually did help me out. No, I, I've never said I don't want to take a humanities class. There are things you should know. They teach you kind of like how to be a good person as well, like the idea of like cultural relativism. Um, I don't care what you're studying. Being able to be a good person isn't a bad thing to learn. Everyone is different, like one way or another, be like um, by culture, or, or it was like physical traits, socioeconomics, and so I just think that at the same time, even though we're so different, we're still like one like humankind. So humanities is just like you know we're all different, but yeah, kind of understanding that we're but, like a big <laughs> entity. I guess that's why humanities is important. So woven throughout our core subjects is this idea that perhaps there's an application to the larger world. So once we leave here, we can take these, I think, very academic, ivory tower sense of the word humanities and apply that to actual humans and what that means for human existence and human lives. I think my biggest benefit is I've been able to apply it to what I'm doing now. I'm teaching, well, in the graduate program to teach and stuff, and it's definitely been more applicable, I feel like, because I can think creatively, I can, I have that extra background. I don't think I'd be as an effective a teacher without that skill. If you're at a school that has limited course offerings, you're going to just take courses that are, you know, what you need to graduate. 
And if you don't have the options to take a course and learn about just an entire semester on Gandhi, for example, you're not going to do that if you don't have the opportunity. In the humanities field is not just my way of thinking, but it's the people around me too. And yeah, I think I think the people around me, we've all we all understand that it's valuable information, you know? It's good stuff to know. STEM is wonderful and can add so much to the world, but the world includes humans, and so if we take humans out of the equation, then what are those things good for? What do they mean? Yes, it's very beneficial um, to attend a liberal arts school that provides a humanities aspect. Well, humanities to me, um, I go back to the uh, Middle Ages when the liberal arts came into being and things like um, the study of languages and religion and philosophy, but in the modern period, history, literature, uh, the fine arts, anything, I mean, to me, humanities is what, what does it mean to be a human being? Who are we? Where do we come from? What might we hope for? Where are we going? What can we do about any of it? Can we decide any of it? Uh, are, are, are we passively swept along by events and by contingency? Or are we uh, some, 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 some principle of, of active willing within, within the circumstances of the world in which we find ourselves? And I prefer to think that the latter is the case. Where we explore what it is to be human. Now, that sounds very general, and I certainly wouldn't exclude biology from, from being able to say, well, we also explore what it means to be human. But we do it, we do it differently. Different disciplines frame problems differently. And so I think the humanities come at it not from a scientific methodology, but from a human experience. How do, we, how do we think about the experiences that we have? How do we think about the experiences of others? Whether they are real, whether they are fictional, it is that exploration of what the meaning of human existence is. At the educational level, a kind of engagement with all the best that has been written, thought, spoken, sung, painted, recorded, engraved, sculpted, uh, you know, across thousands and thousands of years. Humanities means the engagement with that material, sort of representation, the way we represent the world to ourselves and ourselves to the world. It's the part of um, where we think about some of the great works of literature, some of the great ideas, some of the philosophical um, notions that undergird all our um, ways of, of living. The humanities, how we interpret the world around us, um, how we know how to interpret it, um, how we think critically about things. And I think for me, most importantly, um, ethics, judgment, so um, study the humanities to hopefully not make the same mistakes that we've made in the past. And also to learn how our, our culture is different from others and maybe there's a better way to do things. I was thinking, well, you know, um, it is the study of human culture overall. I mean, I think that is what it means to me. It's the, it's the set of disciplines that concern themselves particularly with the way that humans interact with each other to create culture and then sustain that culture over time. But this to me is going to become the vital way that people connect with the real world, uh, which is never going to go away because human nature is what it is. Family dynamics are what they are. Uh, you know, it, all the things that happen to you are all things that the great thinkers and artists for thousands of years have been dealing with. So if you can read, you know, if you can, if you can be familiar with what the greatest thinkers of all time have had to say about 
the relationships that you're dealing with right now, we need to know those things. We can learn a lot from them. So I think it's more important than it's ever been because we're all living in our own little worlds now to a much greater extent, I think. Uh, so for me, um, the moment that a student, a person, but I'll say student because I've taught for 40 something years, suddenly goes, oh my gosh, and in my case, you know, Shakespeare is so much smarter than I am. That's the moment that they can learn, that they can really learn. So for me, that's what the humanities is. It's valuing the wisdom of the past, recognizing that time moves very fast and that our wisdom is quickly becoming the wisdom of the past. Every time I say something, it's, it's a statement from the past. So, so for me, when humanities are challenged, they are challenged in, on the idea that things, that people are getting smarter and that there are things going on out there that are smarter. Now, there are certainly, no question of it, technologically there are great things happening. Uh, but when it comes to the human heart and the way we react to one another, I think we can just as easily rely on Socrates as we can on Dr. Phil, you know? So I think that's, that that's what we need to keep in mind. Um, and so that's what I think humanities are. I think sometimes we go into this assuming that students walk into college knowing what they want. Just kind of like I thought I knew I wanted to be architecture. I went to a public school and most of that was things that I just did because it was part of the common curriculum requirements that you needed to take. I didn't really understand humanities uh, when I was going through elementary, high school and so forth until I got to college and went to a liberal arts school and still didn't really understand what humanities was until I started taking the courses myself. And then I understood not exactly what it was still, but it, it made sense to me as, as to why we needed to study these types of courses. I personally probably didn't realize until after I graduated from college and some years later, um, e even the significance of the study of the humanities. You know, I started off thinking I wanted to make money, but then I discovered that it was more fun to sit around the coffee shop, um, you know, at two o'clock in the morning and talk about the eternal verities and think big thoughts. I wanted to study English and literature from, from the time that I first went to school. Uh, I don't know, if I, had, if I had gone straight through school at that point, I don't know if I would have, because I would have felt that pressure to be able to get a job. And so when I did go back to school, I felt that I had, you know, both earned the luxury, if you will, to be able to do exactly what I wanted to do. You know, in a liberal arts education, you know, you 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 get some pieces of this and pieces of that. And it, it does take a while for students, I think, to realize, hey, it all works together. It, it, it all comes together and informs, you know, who I am and the way I look at the world um, as, I'm, as I mature. But when you're a freshman and you're looking at the courses and you're thinking, oh, well, this, 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 what do I do? You don't realize that it will all come together um, and, and, and inform your judgments about things, but you, you might not see the connections. Um, and, and sometimes maybe we don't do such a good job of, of stating what the humanities are about. This is a case of something, people trying to fix something that's not broken. I think that the United States had a great system of higher education. And I think it still does have the world's best higher education institutions. And I don't think it's broken. I think that people make a conscious decision that they want to go to college and they're going to invest money in themselves. And it's not necessary to do all of this. It's fair. You know, you want to graduate and have uh, a job that you can go into and contribute and, and something that's worthwhile. But all around the world, other people are getting that kind of training that 
makes them citizens of the world and 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 they know things about a lot of different cultures and different histories and different perspectives. So if we're training people in a very narrow, focused way, we're putting them at a disadvantage when they go out into that job market against these other people who have wider life experiences. So that's the beauty of having the coming from a liberal arts school is that you have an advantage over other, you know, um, your, your peers at other institutions perhaps because you that's part that's ingrained in you the humanities are ingrained in you and that's already part of who you're becoming and your understanding of how the world around you operates and so forth so it's it's to your advantage and then I ask students to use that as a as a market you know marketing tool on your resume and in your interviewing because um, that's really what employers are looking for in my opinion I have a younger brother that's uh, just a gifted plastics engineer and um, he's actually sent all over the world to do uh, that kind of work. I'm playing a game called Catchphrase, and you, you're sitting there trying to get the, you know, help the other person understand what the phrase is that you're trying to, uh, to guess. And as we were doing it, it became very obvious that he knows a lot about plastics, but he doesn't know much about anything else. And, and I have students who come in and say, I don't read. I just don't read. And yeah, yeah, and it's hard. How do you how do you then motivate somebody who is so resistant has come in with this idea? I don't do this thing. As an instructor, I feel as though I need to do a better job of helping students understand why discussing a text in my class is important. The question that instructors do not like is, did we do anything important? I wasn't in class. <laughs> Yes, we did, but I think they don't, I think sometimes, particularly with literature, things that are thoughtful about the human experience, and that's typically what we choose for our classroom. Our classroom. And I think sometimes that because literature is something that is a pastime for a lot of people, I wonder sometimes if students understand that there's something serious going on in the class, that there's something a little different from reading for pleasure. It doesn't exclude that, but I think I have to do a better job of, of saying, when you throw an idea out and we explore it, and does it have merit or well, do we need to tweak it? That's critical thinking in action. That's using evidence that we have in front of us, the text, but saying, are my ideas, or my interpretation, is it standing up to scrutiny? That's the exercise of critical thinking. But but sometimes we also, you know, I think in this country, have a a an idea that things have to be easy. You know, if you don't get it the first time, you know, we have a we have an ethic for sport that says, oh, this is going to be hard. You're going to have to work at it. And that isn't true for, you know, intellectual endeavors. We think, oh, either you just get it the first time, it's easy or not. If you don't, then, yeah, too bad. I guess I'm not cut out for that. That's a lot of the pressure that students are feeling is thinking about, is college a moment to engage with the humanities, or is that a luxury? And we should spend our time in college in a pre- or paraprofessional way, uh, working on the skills um, and the particular talents that we think will make us employable, which is, it was, I'm not actually critical of that model. I understand where it comes from. Um, but there is some tension between that kind of vocational approach to higher education and the humanities approach to higher education. You can be taught skills. Um, we're here to learn critical thinking and critical engagement and creative engagement, right? Um, you know, because, you know, if you are a curious, uh, educated, engaged human being, you can be taught to do things. Employers, for example, who are recruiting for jobs and internships, they're not necessarily looking for individuals who know, who are experts in a particular subject. Of course, there are those fields or industries where that's, where that's needed. But basically, they're looking for people who can understand um, and can com who can communicate effectively, who can communicate with others well, who uh, have good critical thinking skills, who can, who can identify and solve problems. And I think that's where the humanities come into play. Because as I said, in, some in, in a lot of instances, they can train you to do the job that they need you to do if they know you have the... Um, you know, the other understandings and the other skill sets involved. Owners of big businesses that, um, like <clears throat> new um, startup computer companies, right, that say like, you don't need a college education to do this. If you can code, you can work for me. 
And uh, I think that's that's concerning. That's trouble. Not everybody needs a college education, but I think the ideas that come from a liberal arts degree are really important. I urge every college to treasure and nourish its humanities and not to, that's the word I would want, not to grab for the shiny new thing at the expense of the treasures of the past. The humanities feed my hunger for fascination. And every human being has the hunger for it. Every human being has the hunger for being highly interested. <laughs> to be transported beyond boredom and banality. I, the study of humanities will not permit you to be bored. Not for a moment. <laughs> I can't imagine how you could be. During my interviews, I found very strong support for the humanities, and that gave me a lot of encouragement. I was preparing for it to be an argument between people who don't think humanities are important and the people who do think humanities are important. It was really good to see that everyone I came in contact with was on the side believing that humanities were important. So this project was a learning experience for me because I was told by one of my parents that I should look for something that would get me a job after college and that made me panic. And that's why I appreciate this project so much because it showed me how deeply the humanities run within each of us and how great they can be towards your education. My education has been so much more because of them and doing this project has helped me realize even more deeply why I want to go into film. I want to document the human experience and share it with others through this medium. And the humanities delve more deeply into that subject matter than anything. I think that was the best way for me to finish this project. Tu n'es plus la même aujourd'hui 
je ne sais plus Je crois que je t'aime, je ne sais plus Pourquoi me t'aime, je ne sais plus Je crois que je t'aime, je ne sais plus Pourquoi me t'aime, je ne sais plus Tu n'es pas là, tu n'es pas la même Tu n'es plus la même aujourd'hui Mais tu n'es pas là tu n'es pas la même, tu n'es plus la même aujourd'hui. Je ne sais plus. Je crois que je t'aime. Je ne sais plus. Je ne sais plus. Je ne sais plus. Je ne sais plus.